Inspectors in Japan are trying to find out whether any radioactive rice has been sold to consumers. They detected newly harvested rice in Fukushima Prefecture with high levels of radioactive cesium. So now they're trying to see if any radioactive grain is out there. Inspectors measured 630 becquerels per kilogram of radioactive cesium in rice harvested in the Onami district of Fukushima City. The levels exceed the government health limit of 500 becquerels per kilogram. Prefectural officials say harvests from the same patties are stored at local facilities. They say none of that rice has been released to the market. They've asked all farmers in the district not to ship any more. They say none of that rice has been released to the market. They've asked all farmers in the district not to ship any more. And now they're checking into recent shipments. Farmers say they've sold about one ton of rice from the district to local dealers this season. Inspectors are trying to find out whether any of that rice has reached consumers. They say none of that rice has been released to the market. They've asked all farmers in the district not to ship any more. It's very disappointing that radioactive cesium and the rice exceeded the state limit. The first thing we have to do is to find out how it happened. Prefecture authorities are discussing what measures they can adopt to protect shipments in the future. Accident manuals for reactors number two and three at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have revealed another failure by the utility to observe procedures in the event of an accident. Mm. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency on Thursday released Tokyo Electric Power Company's procedural manuals for the reactors. A portion of the manual for the number one reactor was disclosed in October. The newly disclosed manuals run to about 180 pages each for reactors 2 and 3. They describe injecting water into the reactors and the venting of steam to reduce pressure within the containment vessels. However, the manuals fail to cover specific procedures for an extended all-station blackout, such as the one that occurred at the number one reactor. Problems are also revealed with TEPCO's implementation of the manuals, with staff observing procedures immediately after the earthquake hit the plant, but it adhering to very few of the steps after the tsunami. The latest disclosure of the manuals comes after the utility earlier submitted them to a lower house panel with most of their contents blacked out. TEPCO had insisted on keeping the information secret to protect its intellectual property and because publication could open its facilities to terrorist attacks. TEPCO has compiled its version of what happened at the Fukushima Daiichi plant during the first five days after the March 11th earthquake and tsunami triggered the nuclear accident. The 50-page report is a detailed chronicle of the events that took place at the plant, centering on reactors 1, 2, and 3, as well as the utility's responses to the emergency. It includes photos of workers during a power outage in a central control room on the night of March 11th, trying to secure power for gauges using vehicle batteries. Trying to secure power for gauges using vehicle batteries. The document says because workers had to wear air cylinders and masks, it took nearly one hour to check the pumps in the number two reactor building. The work normally takes about 10 minutes. TEPCO says the report will soon be made public. Trying to secure power for gauges using vehicle batteries. We're in war in Afghanistan. We're in war in Libya. But there is another undeclared war being waged right now, right here in America and the rest of the world. It's not a war for territory. It's not a war for gold. Not a war for oil. This is a war for everything, including our right to survive. You and I are now combatants. That's right. You and I are now combatants facing the genocidal forces of globalism, statism, fascism, and oh, by the way, greed and corruption. The linked state and corporate forces want you sick, they want you docile, they want you poor, they want you profitable for them. 
They want you out of the way. They want you fluoridated, dumbed down, distracted. They want you to be abused and confused. And at their pleasure, at their pleasure, they want you dead. That's right. Dead. Yes, this is a war against our minds and our bodies. We are the frontline troops in an undeclared but ultimately lethal war. It's a war where the perpetrators, the U.S. and global ruling class of political cronies, claim all they need is more power over our as every aspect of our lives to save us from the disasters they have cynically unleashed upon us. Things like SARS, the swine flu epidemic, the economic catastrophe that's ongoing right now, the BP oil spill, and oh, by the way, Fukushima. You see, our very DNA is being turned against us through their genomicidal genome-destroying technologies, vaccines, nuclear energy, and poison GMO, chemical food, again, P-H-U-D-E, food. Our world and our actual DNA is being turned against us into weapons of mass extinction, not destruction, extinction, and we and our children are the masses destined for that extinction. Our children are being destroyed. The genome, the very blueprint of life, is being attacked by intentional, carefully planned genomicide. The alteration of our DNA so that it cannot support reproduction. It cannot support health, or indeed, life itself. Our children's DNA is being weaponized and turned against their survival. And guess who's footing the bill for this kill? We are. These technologies are heavily subsidized by our tax dollars and supported by the bought and paid for political leadership.